This tutorial is part of our YouTube playlist, TriFlask API Development. So you can watch this course from the start if you prefer. Now, alternatively, if you enjoy this course, you can also purchase this course on Udemy, where you'll find deeper content, source code, and course updates. Links to both the playlist and Udemy course can be found in the video description. We have already seen an example of using PIP in the previous tutorial, but I just wanted to extend that slightly to discuss managing dependencies with PIP within our application. Now, so far we have created a small app and hopefully we understand the basics now of root. So the first step building this application, we used PIP, the built-in Python package manager to download Flask so that we could then import and utilize it within our application. If we go over to Venf and then the bin, oh, wrong one, the lib, sorry, folder, we can see that Flask is there and available. So that's where we are actually finding importing Flask from within our virtual environment. So anything we download from the Python package index via pip will be then installed in this lib folder. Package management is a key component and consideration when developing your application because what you want to be able to do is replicate your project. Maybe if you're going to actually deploy this application on a server, you want to be able to replicate the resources required for this application in the other environment. Of course, you might like to share your application with others. So therefore they need to know what resources are required in order to actually run our application. And there may be many of them. So we have already utilized pip. We pip installed flask. That was the command that we initiated previously. So we know how to install applications, but what we can also do is check or make a list of all the installed packages. So if I type in pip and then freeze and then specialize, specialize, specify, there we go, a file, What's going to happen now is pip is going to collect all of the packages that have been installed and list them in a file. Now you might be surprised to find there's quite a few, even though all we have done is installed flask. So what's happened here is that when we install flask using pip, it automatically installs flask along with its dependencies. So these dependencies are other packages that flask relies on to function properly. Now it might not be the case building a Flask API that we're going to need all of these additional packages because these packages would be performing very specific tasks um, which we may perform when interacting with Flask. Hopefully at this point, you've got the general concept of pip install and pip freeze to build a list of requirements. Now the importance of building a list of requirements, like I previously mentioned, is that so others or yourself can replicate the, the environment for your app to work successfully. So what we can now do, let's imagine that we were not in a, a virtual environment. So what we can now do is pip install, and then we can use the R flag and then specify the requirements file. So this command, is going to install all of the dependencies for our application that's listed within our requirements file. By doing that, it will install all of the required packages so that our application can work correctly. So if you need to recreate the environment for our project, you would recreate and create a virtual environment. You would then activate the virtual environment and then you would run pip install minus r requirements, and that would install all the packages that, been, that has been defined in the requirements text file. So what you're going to see throughout this project is when we install any package, we'll go ahead and pip freeze and keep the package requirements file here updated. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and run pip freeze requirements.txt to create the requirements text file. Now what you can do if you'd like to, and I will just quickly show you, I'm going to delete the vent folder. Okay, because I've got my requirements file. So let's imagine now we're just starting a new project, maybe on another computer or potentially um, on our server. So let's go ahead and recreate everything from this point. So I pip, uh, no, let's start again, Python 3, remember on Windows, just Python. 
uh, minus M VMV VMV. So I need to do that first to replicate the, the virtual environment folder. Now I need to activate it. So on Mac here, I'm going to type in source bin activate. And then what I can then do is pip install uh, minus R and then the requirements text. And that's going to install all the requirements or the packages that's specified in the requirements file. So I'm now just, uh, I've looped around and I'm back to where we started from before we deleted the virtual environment folder. So that is how we can replicate or regenerate the virtual environment and install all the requirements for our application. Now, the important part here is trying to remember every time you install a new app to update the requirements file.